Leave. thanks so much for your time. Thank you so much for having me. So, uh, you are running for mayor. You're coming into this race without any government experience, the most unique resume of all <laughs> candidates. So, why do you want to be mayor and why do you think you're the best candidate? Well, this new form of government where we have a weak mayor, I see that as a perfect opportunity to have a new type of leader. I jumped in the race because I crave different types of leaders. I crave an artist leader. I crave matriarchy. There's different types of leadership historically. I'm a cultural anthropologist by education. And I'm kind of tired of like an MBA or a law degree being prerequisites. I want an artist to lead. And I saw this form of government coming on and said, I have the exact skill set for this. So you say the, the new role for the mayor will be weakened, but to be fair, uh, the mayor will still have the ability and the responsibility to hire and fire city staff, right. including the new city administrator, the, the chief of police as well. Do you think that your level of experience will give voters confidence that you can handle such big responsibilities? Oh, absolutely it should. I mean, I have 50 years on this earth. I'm an expert at creating teams. I you know, have a stellar education. I look for the resumes that will f do the best for, this, for these um, very important jobs, chief of police, city administrator. But I mean, ultimately, the new mayor's role is going to be making, creating great relationships with those people, with the council, with the county. We've had some not so good relationships the past four years, and I see the new mayor's role, like, reflecting the very best of Portland to Portlanders, hiring the right people for those very important jobs, and then really creating productive relationships. You mentioned the county. A lot of people would say there is dysfunction between yeah. the city and the county government. How would you navigate that if you're elected? Well, <laughs> I am expert at creating relationships with um, prickly people. That's something we do you know, at the clubs downtown all the time. And for certain other things like houselessness and um, addiction that the county kind of is in charge of, I'm advocating for a tap-down model from the state because that would kind of negate that um, animosity between the city and the county. If the, if the state came in and said, houselessness and addiction are problems throughout Oregon. They're in Roseburg. They're at the coast. They're Joseph. Um, let's have one model, and that takes out that, that antagonism. So that's, that's one of my ideas for a solution. And also, you know, I think... A lot of people show up for city council meetings. Nobody shows up for the county. Let's make sure we hold them to task as voters and go there and see what they're doing and, and make sure that they're being productive. Some Portlanders argue that the problems that Portland is experiencing are not that bad and that it's the perception of those problems that's the bigger problem. Do you agree with that assessment? Yes. Qualified, yes. I mean, these problems are happening throughout America, and the West Coast is unique in that our cost of living is so high. We don't have adequate low-income, no-income, middle-income housing supply. But uh, the, the messaging that's getting out that Portland is the absolute pit of despair, that's wrong. Portland is blooming. That's another reason I jumped in, is I see that a lot of our best things aren't amplified, abreast qualities aren't amplified, and I want a mayor who sings to the nation and to the world, who reflects the best of Portland, um, while also working very hard on, on those problems, but in an imaginative, inspired way. Yeah, throughout your campaign, you've talked about the importance of, of telling Portland's story. Mm -hmm. Why is that so important to you? Well, again, like a new, type of leader. Let's have a storyteller, mayor, um, cultural anthropology. I lived in Tanzania. I lived in Indonesia. I lived in Germany. I, I see different types of leaders really thrive. And for, for a community story to be reflected by their leader and amplified, I think that that's, that is the job of the leader. And when our leaders just amplify the story of you know, numbers, statistics, data is really important, but I want spirit amplified in addition to those things and I think Portland we have our arts are outstanding in spite of the lack of funding our small businesses 80% of our businesses are small businesses I'm your business candidate you know I want these things amplified the nation needs to be reminded of those things the world needs to be reminded of those things you have a mission statement with your campaign uh, that talks about earth stewardship yes what specifically yes. are you proposing there? 
Well, in the story sense, let's start with our river instead of like an inconvenience that needs to be bridged. It is a lifeline that connects us all. We need to keep our water clean, drinkable um, for all creatures, for future generations. So just to, rem to, to reconnect every Portlander with our river, however that is, through story, through actual actionable things. And let's not forget the elephant in the room, the CEI hub, like that, that is a ticking time bomb. So that would be my first action as mayor is to make sure that we had a, um, a group, a steering committee that would make sure that that is moved. Um, so in story and then also, yeah, practically, without Mama Earth, none of us has a house, none of us. So let's remember that and put that first. Every artist needs a house. Every houseless person needs a house. Every business needs a house. Obviously, homelessness is one of the top concerns of Portland voters. Mm -hmm. uh, do you subscribe to the strategy of housing first, or do you think triage first is more important? In other words, getting people into shelter first should be the top priority financially and strategically. Could you ask me that one more time? I, sure. I, I, it sounded like the same yeah, either yeah. No. or. <laughs> well, well, no. Uh, when it comes to homelessness, some say that housing first should be the top priority. Others say we need to triage the situation, that there are people on the streets that need to go into a temporary shelter first and that the funding should go there first. What do you think is the best strategy? I don't see it as either or. I think we need many different arms to address this massive problem, but the data is there that people recover from mental illness, from addiction, in shelter like we we need arms to connect with them where they're at on the street but ultimately that's where the healing begins give them five days to sleep and you're going to have a different client that you're working with safe sleep locked door where they can make sure that their belongings are still there when um when they are ready to wake up and start the hard journey of recovery or start, you know trying to um do job training to make themselves, uh, you know, a contributing member of our society. Stories are powerful, but the city's problems are going to require some pragmatic, perhaps hardline solutions. Enforcement of our current laws, for example. Are you prepared to to be a little more hardline <laughs> than what we've seen right now, or do you think that that's the wrong approach? Oh no, I mean, the mayor's job is certainly to uphold the laws. I can't come in and say, oh, it's, it's, it's time to do everything my way. Not at all. The, the mayor has to work in tandem with the city council. The city council is our legislative body going forward. Um, we do need practical solutions. We need our police force to be right-sized so that there's not so much overtime, so that our police officers are supported and not retiring because they're so overworked and overwhelmed. Um, yeah, I, I advocate for pragmatic solutions because those are the only solutions that will actually work. We need the story, but we need the pragmatic too. And I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm a single mom artist. Like I'm your fiscal conservative. I am pragmatic to a fault, but I'm guided by voices. Understood. So to wrap things up, what is it that you want Portlanders to know about you? <sighs> What is it I want Portlanders to know about me? Um, know that I am a lot more than any stereotype, whether that's artist, single mom, stripper. I have thought about all these issues carefully, critically for 50 years, my whole life, living in rural America, living in urban America, living abroad in Europe, Africa, and Asia. And I, I bring a lot of different experience and different perspective to the stage. I see um, humans voting out of fear. A lot of us are driven by fear. That's an animal instinct. But I think I want Portlanders to vote with love and to remember that we can, we can move forward with love, not just fear. Lee Vostis, thank you so much for your time. <laughs> thank you.